Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli here. Welcome to a brand new edition of In The Shop. And I've got a big one for you today. And today, we're gonna be talking about my top four ways to rig a big worm, a big giant worm. They call these snakes, they call them big worms, whatever you wanna call them. Big plastic worms are a killer and they definitely have a time and a place. You know, big worms can be fished all year long in certain parts of the country. But for sure, you ready for this? Summer, late summer, and early fall are the absolute best times to fish big worms. You know why? That's your first question. Why you're saying why a big plastic? Why a big plastic worm versus a regular plastic worm? And even before that, maybe I should address what is a big plastic worm? To me, a big worm is something that is bigger than six inches. It's fat, fatter than a normal soft plastic worm, right? So we're talking about seven, eight, nine, 10 inch, even 12 inch worms. And when you look at them, they're just bigger. They're bulkier, they're fatter, they're wider. They put off more vibration, there's more presence. Okay, so big worms, let's talk about seven to 12 inch worms. We're talking about straight tail worms, needle tail worms, curl tail worms, and of course, ribbon tail worms. We're gonna get in that a little bit later. But why a big worm? Let's address that first before we get into these four rigging methods. Why? Why a big worm? I'm gonna give you two real important reasons. The first one is forage match. Mimicking what those bass are eating naturally in their environment. I want you to think about that. Everything a fish eats isn't small, right? Do they eat little crawfish and little shad and minnows? Absolutely they do. But do they eat big forage? Big long forage like bait forage like herring or shiners? Yes, they do. Do they eat eels? Yes, they do, right? Do they eat needlefish in brackish water fisheries? Yes, they do. Giant crawfish in certain parts of the country? Yes, right? So a big worm imitates big forage. That's the first reason I want you to throw this. And especially when we're talking about the heat of the summer, or late summer, early fall. Think about it, right? A lot of that forage is grown up, right? During the spawn, there's a lot of stuff in the water that's fry, little. But as the year goes on, by late summer into fall, that stuff's grown. You have last year's fry now. Stuff's getting bigger that time of the year. So we're matching our forage, okay? Number two reason to throw a big worm, big plastic worm versus a normal size? Fish size. Bass size. You've heard it. If you've been doing this for a while, you've heard this. Big bait, big bass theory. I'm here to tell you, it's absolutely 100% true. So when you throw a big worm, your odds of catching a bigger grade of fish increase dramatically, dramatically, okay? So my top two reasons why to throw a big worm, to imitate the forage and to catch a big bass. I wanna throw in one other one and then we're gonna get into rigging, is a big worm puts off more presence in the water. When would you want that? Let's think about that, right? What about dirty, muddy, stained water? Absolutely. That big 10 and 12 inch ribbon tail is gonna put out more vibration and presence in dirty water. What about low light conditions? Early in the morning, late in the evening, during a storm, cloudy, dark day. How about night fishing? How about night fishing? 
the bigger body, the bigger tails, more presence in the water, better chance of getting the fish's attention. Dirty water, dark conditions, okay? There's three good reasons why we should throw it. Let me get into now my top three ways we're gonna fish this worm. And as we do it, I'll talk a little bit about my preferred style too, okay? Let's start with the easy one, and this is one that I've caught thousands of fish on in my life. And that is the good old Texas rig, Texas rig, big worm, right? Look at this thing right here. You're looking at a 12 inch Berkeley power worm ribbon tail in a color called blue fleck. I've caught more fish on this, that particular color, this exact setup than you could imagine. It's a great all around setup. But I love it on a Texas rig because of the versatility of where I can fish it. I can fish it in a lot of different cover. I can fish it in a lot of different depth zones, depending on the size of that weight. So if I'm shallower, I usually will use a 3 16ths, a quarter, an eighth. Mid depth, right? Shallow zero to 10 foot. Mid depth, if I'm in 10 to 20, a 3 eighths, a 5 16ths, a half ounce. And as we get even deeper, if you're one of those anglers that live near deep water, Kentucky Lake ledge fishing, California, deep water, I could put on a half, a seven eighths, a three quarter ounce weight and get this really deep. So I love the versatility of Texas rig. And my preferred worm choice from a standpoint of tail style, right? We got needle tails, we got blunt tails. I like the ribbon tail. I like the ribbon tail because of that fluidity, that beautiful side to side motion. And the strength of a Texas rig, besides fishing it in and around any kind of cover, is this is a bait that we drag on the bottom. So when we want a bait that stays on the bottom, really low to the bottom, that worm's a great choice, right? It just lays there. I throw it out there, I let it sink down, I'm literally going from three to 12, I'm dragging, and when I feel something, I stop, I might shake a little, I'm dragging, and that bait lays flat on the bottom, that tail just winding. For sure, there are times when fish are feeding off the bottom, they want something slow and low, they never want that bait to come off the bottom. Harder bottoms, shell, gravel, sand, clay, excels in that, right? So ribbon tail, big worm, that's a 12 inch, Texas rigged, my number one way to rig and fish a big worm, okay? Let's get to number two. And this one's a sleeper. This is one I don't even like talking about, but this is in the shop. We give away all the secrets. A big worm rigged on a shaky head. That's right. You may have heard it called magnum shaky head fishing, but basically what we're talking about is a big worm on a shaky head. It's a lot of good magnum shaky heads out there. This one is one of my favorites. It's a VMC rugby head. We've got these in sizes all the way up to three quarter of an ounce, all the way down to an eighth. A lot of great weights, but it's got a bigger beefed up hook on it, especially in these bigger weight sizes. Look at that. That's a 3 8 It comes with a really nice stout 4 aught offset hook. And there's no peg or no screw. We're just going to Texas rig it. For this system, the shaky head, my preferred big worm choice is that big blunt tailed worm. Okay? And a lot of companies make them, but this is one by Berkeley Power Bait called a fatty bottom hopper and they make it in this big seven inch size. Look at that worm. It's not just long, but it's fat, it's bulbous. Look at that big bulbous tail on it. And I love to fish this big worm on a magnum shaky head. I'll get it and I'll literally just bite just a hair of it off. I mean like a 16th of an inch. I bite off just to make a flat surface on the tip of that big worm. 
And then the nice thing about that VMC rugby is you just got to Texas rig it. So I go in about an eighth of an inch, I pop it out, I go around that little offset hook that's built into the head, and I do my normal Texas rig. Just want to make sure the bait is straight, and I want to make sure that flat bottom of that blunt worm is facing down. Because on the fall, this worm actually glides a little bit, right? Look, flat side down. Think of it like a sled. It'll glide a little bit on the fall. But a lot of your bites on this big worm on a shaky head will come as you shake it on the bottom. It's called a shaky head, right? So unlike the Texas rig big ribbon tail worm that I just drag, right, along the bottom, this one, I shake. I shake. And because of that head, look at the design of that VMC shaky head, Magnum shaky head. And because of that straight tail bulbous worm, unlike the ribbon tail, look how that thing's gonna sit on the bottom. Look, just like that. Head down, tail up. And when I shake, here's what it's doing. That tail shaking, but it's shaking off the bottom. Like, like, like this, like a hand, right? And when fish are feeding down, but they want something out of the bottom, off the bottom, what a great choice. Um, when you're feeding on big crawfish, when you're feeding on eels, have you ever seen an eel feeding on the bottom? It pokes down with its head and that tail sits up. Look, just like that, okay? Uh, a big shiner, a big giant darter or, or a, a cisco feeding down looks just like it, okay? I do a lot of shaking. When I hit something, I pause it but I do a lot of shaking with that to get that tail activated. This is great when you're around a more soft bottom, right? We talked about that's great on hard bottoms, but when you're in muck or mud or silt bottom, having that tail up attracts more attention to that big worm. Method number two, fishing that big worm on a shaky head. All right. Method number three, this is a bit of a sleeper, and it's a way to rig a big worm when you want even more action. And method number three is fishing a big worm on a swinging jig head, AKA articulated jig head. This one is by VMC, it's called a swinging rugby jig. Pop one out of the pack and let you see it. So it looks like the shaky jig, except the difference is the head and the hook are not one piece. They're articulated, they're separate pieces. So the head and the hook move independently, okay? And because of that movement, you're gonna impart a lot more side to side, free swinging motion with a big worm. Um, my favorite worm, the fish on an articulated jig head, on a swinging jig head, a swing head, is once again the big ribbon tail style worms. This is the 10 inch Berkeley Power Worm. And you know, a lot of times I'll bite a little down a little, but I'll just leave it 10 inch and I'll rig it so that the, the bend in the tail is always facing the opposite way of the bend of the hook, okay? Listen, this is important. This is how you're gonna maximize action on this. The bend of the hook, look at it right here. It's going to the right. When I line up this worm, I wanna make sure the bend of the tail is going left. So when I do my normal Texas rig, eighth of an inch, pull it out around the keeper, make sure my worm is nice and straight, when you look at it, the bend of that hook is the opposite way of the bend of that tail. And that's gonna maximize action. But what this swinging jig head or, or swing head does, this is the VMC Rugby, is now, instead of that worm just laying flat on the bottom like our Texas rig ribbon tail, now we're gonna get side to side and a little bit of lift off the bottom. So a bigger movement 
a bigger action than a traditional Texas rig. Times when I'd throw this, the hottest water of the year, the hottest part of the summer, when you need more action, this is a good one. The other time I would throw this is in dirtier, more stained water. I've encountered this a lot where in cleaner water, the regular Texas rig gets the nod. But if the water is dirty, it's muddy, it's only a foot visibility, that extra action, and there's even a little noise with that hook point going back and forth on the head, can make a big difference, okay? Swinging rugby, I fish it a lot like the Texas rig and I drag it a lot. One last tip on this one, you could actually let this sink to the bottom, you ready for this? And just begin a really slow reel. It's almost like swimming it, right? And that rugby head maintains the bottom and that worm goes side to side with that tail moving, okay? Method number three for a big worm, big ribbon tail, it's on a swing head. All right, last but not least, this is another sleeper, guys. A big worm rigged on a Tokyo rig. Tokyo rig. If you watch Mike Iaconelli fishing on YouTube, you've seen all the videos about this amazing rigging method. We've talked about a lot of soft baits, from creature baits, to crawls, to minnow style baits, to beavers, but a Tokyo rig with a big worm, it's perfect. Especially for, you ready for this? Deep water and current, and current. And for sure, there are times when I wanna fish a big worm in deep water and current, okay? Real quick before I get into the worm and how to rig it, there's the basics of a Tokyo once again, right? We got a little barrel swivel on a welded O-ring. On that welded O-ring is our hook. And for big worms, I like a bigger hook, a four or a five aught straight shank, or that four or five aught EWG hook, depending on the worm. And below that, on that same welded ring, is a rigid wire that we could add whatever size weight we want to, right? From a half to a three quarter, all the way up to an ounce or an ounce and a half. So a great tool for deep water and a great tool for current. Before we get into that, lots of big worms could work on that, the ribbon tail, the blunt end tail, but my favorite big worm for rigging on that Tokyo rig, you ready for this one? is the Berkley Powerbait Flute Worm. I know you know about it in the four and five inch size, but guess what? We've got it in almost a seven inch size. It's a 6.7, it's basically a seven inch bait. And I want you to look at that. It's what I call a needle tail style tail on a flute worm. And even when I hold it still, you really get an idea for that thin little tapered tail, the kind of movement it does. And this is one of the reasons I really love this one on the Tokyo rig when I'm fishing a big worm is because that action is imparted almost all by itself. If you add current to that, you got a tail that doesn't stop moving the entire time. But Tokyo rig, basically I'm gonna Texas rig it on this flute worm. I wanna Texas rig it from the fat end. I'm gonna go in about an eighth of an inch, pop it out. I'm gonna bring it all the way around the shank of the hook, and I'm gonna do a nice Texas rig, making sure that flute worm stays nice and straight. The great thing about the Tokyo rig versus the regular Texas rig, versus the Magnum shaky head, and versus the swinging jig head, is that that rigid wire allows it to stay off the bottom the length of the wire. It's rigid, right? It's not like a drop shot where it compresses on itself. That's a rigid wire. So we're gonna be able to keep that bait one to three inches off the bottom. Very, very important. The other thing is, look at this. Like that articulated swing head, but even more, 
This bait has 360 degree movement, side to side, up and down. And when you're fishing in current situations, right? When there's flow, I don't care if you're in a river, a stream, below a tail race, even if you're in a lake or a reservoir, they're pulling water, there's wind-driven current, that big worm sitting off the bottom, look at it, drifting side to side in the current. You don't even have to move your rod and the current activates it side to side, up and down, and it activates that tail, okay? A great way to rig a big worm for deeper water and for current situations is on a Tokyo rig. There you have it, guys. Whether you're Texas rigging it, whether you're fishing it on a Magnum shaky head, a swinging jig head, or a Tokyo rig, there is for sure a time and a place for big worms. I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. This is the bait that you have a chance to catch the biggest bass of your life on it. Big worm, big bass, that's a true theory. I hope you like this one, talking about four different ways to rig a big plastic worm. If you like what you're hearing, if you like these in the shop, stop, hit that subscribe button right there, become a subscriber to my channel. We have a new one launching every single Thursday. I'm not kidding. If you're already a subscriber to Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube, Tell a friend about my channel. I promise you, they're going to get something out of it. They're going to enjoy themselves. Um, try a big worm. Go big or go home. And I hope you catch the biggest bass of your life. Bye.